Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So today we're gonna to be starting a new series on mobile AA, uh, Tech 2 FLAC versus Tech 3 mobile AA and differences between the two classes, as well as different situations that might be better to use one or the other in lieu of the alternative. So these units are often sent with armies of experimentals or big land pushes, especially in the later stages of the game to mitigate air responses. Because one of the best ways to deal with a land push, especially with experimentals, is to either use strats, gunships, really anything air to ground based is going to do the trick. So if you've lost air control, then Tech 2 Flak or Tech 3 Mobile AA is going to be good things to send with your army. But today I wanted to look specifically at the Mobile Flak um, and then we'll look at the Tech 3 Mobile AA in a future video down the line. This was suggested in one of the comments. So as always, if you guys have something you want me to do a science video about, Drop it in the comments down below. Probably won't do a video on every single one, but I do give some thought. And this is one that I initially wrote off um, as one that I didn't think would be super interesting, but is after giving it some thought, I think there's a couple of things that have either gone forgotten by some more experienced players or some um, mechanics that might not necessarily be understood or even known about by uh, some players that are newer to this game. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, so today's gonna be a little bit of a shorter one, honestly, because these units are very, very similar. Throw the stats up on the screen. They have identical mass, build power, and energy requirements, and the stats across the board are almost identical uh, with them doing very similar DPS. There's a little bit of variation there, um, but they have similar area of effect, similar fire rate, et cetera, et cetera, and these all perform very, very similarly, so just putting them against an air unit. We tested them, I tested them against the broadsword. The only one that actually stood out was the Cybran, taking four less seconds to kill the broadsword um, at 41 seconds, while the UEF Aeon and Seraphim all came in at 45 seconds to kill the unit. So this is to be expected. Cybran has slightly higher DPS, which translates to slightly better time to kill whenever uh, put up against a broadsword. So. The, here, why am I making this video? That's a really, really good question. Um, hover. <laughs> and this is the mechanic that I think a lot of people actually forget about. Now, we've all been on both sides of this equation. We've either been a naval player that is winning our pond on Settons or is pushing on another Navy-centric map and have been begging their, our air player to get their thumbs out of their asses, stop living in their own private eco Idaho for the first 25 minutes of the game. And please, for the love of God, get the torpedo bombers off of us uh, because we're gonna end up losing Navy because we lost all of our cruisers, etc. Um, and we've also been on the other side of the coin where we're the air player that is busy fighting enemy ASF on one side of the map, trying to stop a strat snipe on the other side of the map, dealing with the gunships in the middle, and please begging our naval players to help us out in any way that they possibly can because we can't be in all places at once. So both sides incredibly justified and there is a lot of frustration that comes from both sides. But all joking aside, an awesome solution, there is an awesome solution to this for at least two of the factions and that is hovering flak anti-air. So the two factions that have access to this are gonna be the Seraphim and the Aeon. The best way to explain this is really just to show you. So what you've been watching on the screen is a little under 20,000 mass worth of Navy. It's 15 frigates, two cruisers, and five destroyers uh, getting killed by about 5,400 mass worth of torpedo bombers, which is a good trade, a uh, four to one mass trade ratio. And it is a slow death. And while the frigates do have AA, it isn't enough to offset the torpedo bombers. And we get away with, I think like eight torpedo bombers that are still alive. Now, by adding two hover flak to this force, we don't we do lose our cruisers because most air players are going to focus the cruisers first but we save the entirety of the rest of our fleet so from a mathematic perspective we lose about 4,000 mass worth of cruisers we increase our cost by about 300 to account for the tech 2 flak which means that we traded about 4,300 mass for 5400 mass making that a much more favorable trade than not sending tick to hover flak so the true rankings for these units takes a lot more into account than just uh, their damage per second, AOE, fire rate, mass cost, etc. like we normally look at. 
and instead the ranking for these units comes from the utility that they actually provide for their particular factions so in first here we have aeon the aeon does win something i'm not entirely <laughs> i don't hate the a i do hate the aeon who cares um the only reason that the aeon beats out the seraphim here while they both have hover flak available to them is the aeon really needs the extra aa in their navy there are only to my knowledge if i'm remembering correctly only three units within the Aeon Navy that actually has anti-air, and that's your attack boat at Tech 1, your cruiser at Tech 2, and your aircraft carrier at Tech 3. So none of the other units have supplemental AA that they can use to help. And while the supplemental AA is not great on a lot of the other units, it at least exists, and any damage is going to be good damage. So Aeon wins here just from the fact that they need it a little bit more. And having Tech 2 floating mobile flak in your Navy is going to create more of a difference than it would on the Seraphim. Which leads us to our second place here, which is the Seraphim. So the Seraphim uh, do have AA on pretty much all of their naval units, with the exception of the Destroyer, I believe. Every, everything else and the Tech 1 sub. But everything else has AA, even their Tech 3 sub hunters. And their Tech 3 sub hunters actually have like pretty good AA too. So it's not quite as necessary on the Seraphim side, but it can still be a great value add to just throw 600 mass worth of Tech 2 mobile floating flak, because um, that's gonna help mitigate Tech 2 torpedo bombers quite a bit. So third place here goes to Cybran because it performed the best in the land test and uh, because it, and it doesn't have hover. And in last here is the UEF because it performed on par with everybody else, but it lacks hover. Um, and this isn't to say that the Skyboxer is a bad unit per se, because uh, the Skyboxer does everything that it's designed to do. It'll handle gunships really well. It'll handle mercies, etc. Everything that you need to need it to do from a land-based perspective is going to be perfect. Uh, but it does lack some of the utility, and it loses out on damage per second due to the Cybrant. So at the end of the day, build mobile flak to go with your navy. If you're playing either Aeon or Seraphim, it makes a huge difference. And I don't see very many people, uh, players actually doing this in games. And I'm lumping myself into that category as well. I had completely forgotten about this mechanic until I sat down and was giving this video some thought about what I wanted to highlight. So send Tech 2 Mobile Flak with your Navy. It makes a huge difference and can turn a four to one ratio trade where you're losing 20K mass while the, their air player is spending less than 5,000 into a huge win for you um, and forcing more torpedo bombers to come out or more Navy or some other way to answer other than torpedo bombers. It can literally be a game changer. So that's it for me guys for today. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Peace.